visit today. Welcome back to Lady Go de Lotus. So today we are at um, Elevation Tea with Shannon. She's the owner of Elevation Tea <laughs> and she just let us in to visit her herbal plantation, um, you know, farm here. As you can see, it's a nice view. And she have a cute like setting here for us to try her tea when we come to visit the farm so we're gonna start it now <laughs> so um normally what i do is i just go through um the field and i'll talk about what each plant is and you guys if it's one that is like fun to taste or smell then mm -hmm. we can pick it and try it and um and then we can go into the barn and i'll show you the processing part of it too mm -hmm. so this is um this first one is hibiscus oh this one is hibiscus mm -hmm. Oh, so this is a fun one. It starts basically um, at the end of the year. I go through and chop everything like to the ground. And so all mm -hmm. of the plant mass every year that will eventually be about this tall mm -hmm. is like one season's worth of growth. Wow. It's like amazing the amount of mass that it creates every year. Is this the same thing with high biscuit flowers? Yes. Yep. Ah. So it does start to flower usually in late July or early August. And then we pick flowers daily because they'll wilt very quickly. Yeah. So we pick those in the morning. That's like one of the things we do in the late part of the summer every day. <laughs> I, um, is this the same high biscuit yeah. in Thailand, I think? Yeah. yeah. Shaba. 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 We call it Shaba. Shaba. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is grow very well in Thailand. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> like, you know, almost very dinner tropical. plate size yes. flowers yeah. and everybody's mm -hmm. like, I had no idea you could grow that in Colorado. And it does. It grows yeah. very well, just, you know, seasonally. So uh, in the winter, it's nothing is happening. But. This is annual or is per... Perennial. Mm -hmm. Perennial. Yep, so okay. it comes back every year from the root. Cool. Yeah. Good to know. Maybe I should try again. Hibiscus <laughs> is really popular. So we do... Um, bulk ingredients too for like apothecaries and stuff and then uh -huh. often ask for hibiscus which is hard because because we're just using the flowers mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of excess of that ingredient it goes mm -hmm. into several of the blends like that maroon bells blend phaloa um, and ob joyful both also have um, hibiscus in there so we don't have a lot of extra of that but people really like it <laughs> you just use the flowers the flower just, yes, oh. just the flower yeah see we can do that in thailand <laughs> <laughs> do it yes i recommend it um and so then these two are ones that i do have to replant every year so these are some of my annuals this one is called pineapple sage pineapple sage yeah and let's see if i can probably let me pull i'm just planting this one today you can so if you crush the leaf in your finger you can kind of get a sense for what it um smells like and tastes like it's kind of a fruity thing even though it's a sage family it doesn't have like the savory flavor as much as like the fruity flavor can you smell it it's if you Sounds crush good. it with your fingers you can get the odor pretty well do you get it Mm -hmm. A little bit. A bit. It mm -hmm. does start bit. to like increase in flavor throughout the season. I can, yeah. I, I can like tell that it's the sage. Okay. You got the that. pineapple part, not, not, so much. not so much. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the same. Maybe you have to taste it. Yeah, as it gets bigger, it definitely, mm -hmm. it's like almost overpowering when we pick it. And <laughs> pineapple sage. Yeah. So this is the second herb here so, at the Elevation Tea. <laughs> these this row right here and then across the way is anise. So let me grab some of that. This, this anise, um, it doesn't transplant well and it doesn't overwinter. So it, um, uh -huh. we have to do this one from seed. And if you crush this one, mm -hmm. are you familiar with anise? Mm -hmm. So this is a licorice flavor. It's pretty potent. So we're gonna yeah, so try crush this. Yeah, so crush smell. Do you get that? <laughs> Oh yeah, so that one's stronger. Yeah, so in your sample <laughs> mm. pack, the sunlight blend is our anise blend. And it's so funny because a lot of people, they tell me they don't like licorice, but in the They tea, like it in the... Yeah. Yeah. Licorice is like a German candy. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, usually mm -hmm. um, it's sort of like a gummy mm -hmm. It's like black. Yes, and mm -hmm. usually black. Mm -hmm. yeah. I grown up with that like in the 
In Thailand, we have a candy that's made from licorice. From licorice, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a uh, ouzo, I think, is a, a liqueur mm -hmm. made from anise too that people. Is this yeah. help with um, digestive yes. health, right? Yes, that's why can. people like. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> My dad is a pharmacist, so he kind of sell you know, RB and stuff. Gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> so these are strawberries. And Strawberry! <laughs> we actually went through and picked a bunch, but I Ooh. see there's a little guy from here. I can walk, follow you, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. Ooh, you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Strawberry fresh from the field here. Yeah, so. What will happen is they'll be small like this for the uh, first part of the, um, maybe about a month or two, and then look. they put out runners mm -hmm. and propagate themselves. And then like starting in about mid-July, we start to get berries about this big. Mm. And that's what we usually use and also sell as produce. So, so all of these came from my husband's family on the front range. We propagated all of our strawberries from some variety that they had grown. <laughs> Uh, when he was a kid. I, so all the way across the field are more strawberries. Mm -hmm. A little bit to the right also. And they, we often open up and we strawberry. Especially during festivals and stuff like that. So this, this, this time of year we don't have many berries. So in Thailand they grow that but only in like Chiang Mai province up north. Mm -hmm. So the same place kind of next province to the one that they grow tea. Oh, mm -hmm. gotcha. The tea plantation. I want to go back there. <laughs> they use a lot of labor though, like a lot of hand labor to tea? pick the tea. Oh, yes. yes. I've heard. Yeah. This is, so we have four mint varieties. This one is called apple mint. Apple mint. Apple mint. Apple mint. Another name is woolly mint because it's kind of fuzzy. It's soft. <laughs> and again, just I usually just crush it. That one's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never see this apple mint before. Yeah, this one is the most vigorous plant we have in the whole farm. I had to go through and trench and bury um, subsurface walls to keep it from spreading into the other ingredients. It really wants to grow. Yeah. Yes. And so by the end of the summer, even this inside um, alley where I usually use that for walking um, will just be like a bubble. <laughs> oh. We only really harvest it once a year too because we just we can get so much from one harvest. It makes sense to harvest very much. This is um, lemon balm. So lemon this balm. is also in the mint family, but mm -hmm. totally different in terms of flavor. And um, this is lemon balm. Yeah. Oh, I like this. Yes, me too. It smells so good. This is good. one of my favorite, and it was in mm -hmm. your cancer site one, the tea that you tried. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the ingredients in. I don't think it was in the raspberry one that you tried. But. I wonder if we can grow this in Thailand. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I have either. to try. Yeah. Lemon balm. Super popular. And also, so I have a friend who's a naturopathic physician, and she said this is one of her most, like one of the ingredients. This is that lemon balm. This is apple mint. mint. Yeah. Look for different similar. This is a lot of herb. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what did I think? And each one is very different in terms mm -hmm. of like, you know, what it offers in terms of flavor and also mm -hmm. the way that it grows. So this is peppermint. This is like Yes, candy this is. Mm -hmm. So my sister from Japan, she hates peppermint. And really? I think it's because, what did she say? Like they use it for maybe some kind of medicinal thing that like, Oh, uh, they put it in a lot of medicines. Yeah, so they associate peppermint with like you know illness. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can see Which that. Is funny like because they probably put it in there to make the medicine more mm -hmm. exactly because it's a really great <laughs> digestive aid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, so this actually came from her. She didn't want it anymore, so she uh, gave me a tin can of peppermint that mm -hmm. when they purchased the house in Fort Collins. Mm -hmm. And then once again, we propagated all of our peppermint <laughs> from that one. Can. Yeah, mint is pretty. I know I have the rest, um, you know, garden box, and I have this, mm -hmm. and it's like took over oh, all yeah. my oh, box. Yeah. I have to pull it out. Yep. It's, mm -hmm. All of the mints we have are super vigorous. This is peony. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, echinacea. 
Ah, oh, yes, this one help with help with sleep. Uh, maybe. Is it? I don't know, actually. You might be thinking chamomile. Yeah. Oh. And some 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 of the things that they do, I'm not familiar with, so that may be true. You might know better than me. But this is what it looks like when it's flowering, and we take uh, leaf oh, and flower. Oh, echinacea. I see. You take the... In Colorado, a lot of people call it um, purple coneflower. Yes, echinacea. Yeah. Purple coneflower. So you use the flower on this one. Uh, so we take a stem leaf and flower, and you can uh, use the root too. A lot of people uh, ask if we'll um, sell them root, but we just mm -hmm. don't want to destroy the plant. This right. is can the see, perennial, see, so. Do you see the organic part? We have a grasshopper here. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be in a camera. Hi, grasshopper. I got a cute picture of a ladybug. <laughs> <laughs> I love ladybugs. Really ladybug right yes, to help it. Yeah, like aphid control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to Low and they have lady, like live ladybugs yeah. for sale. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a super fun thing to do with kids for sure. So here's another mint. This is pineapple mint, and the variegation in color is oh. natural. That's what it's supposed to look like. Pineapple mint. A lot of people mint. think it was like you know Dying missing or something, water. Yeah, yeah. nutrient deficit, but it's just the way that it is. It's kind of more like a vanilla flavor mm -hmm. like, to me. It's, it's like milder than yes, a regular sharp. mint. Yes, not sharp like that peppermint. Mm -hmm. Like sort of a soft rounder mint flavor. I never see this as low. This is new to me. Yes. <laughs> and when again when this I was doing research, like the pineapple number of mean... varieties of mint is just crazy. Strawberry and orange mint and chocolate mint and peppermint. Mm-hmm. Mojito mint. <laughs> yes, I saw that the mojito mint. I'm like, that must be very lamy. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I would think too. Kind of yeah. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of citrus mints like lemon and lime. This is um, not supposed to be here, but this is yarrow. <laughs> so if you're familiar, oh, I'm yarrow. pull these off where you can, like in the case of like this one where you can't see uh, what it looks I like. See. But it's a flower that is very ubiquitous to Colorado. So in the yarrow. in the high country, it's almost always white. The wild yarrow is a white um, mm. flower, but ours is a sunset, a Colorado sunset blend. So it's mm -hmm. we have everything from white to that dark kind of fuchsia. So yarrow. Mm. Is this one help with what, what do you put in the blend? What is it for? Uh, it's immunity, I'm oh, pretty immunity. sure. Okay. And um, people use it actually for um, like if they have a wound, mm. like for staunching blood flow and mm -hmm. other things like that. So you use the leaf on yarrow. We use yep the the leaf and the flower. So you can tell See this guy's just flowers, about to flower. Like oh, so it here. helps your blood like coagulate yeah, to stop. Yeah, similar. The I think okay. sage I've heard okay. is the same. Like wild sage will yeah. do that too. But um, I've definitely heard people use mm -hmm. uh, yarrow if it's available in the backcountry if they have a an open cut that mm. stop bleeding. That's a good. Yeah. Do you have? To look that up. Can you put it? Do you know if, if you can put it straight on, or do you have to um, so boil it or anything? Chewing gum. Like I don't know. Spearmint. You look younger than me, mm -hmm. maybe, but my mom used to chew spearmint gum. So whenever I smelled this, yes. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. my I still remember double mint. Double ads. mint. That's what it is. <laughs> double yep. mint. Double mint. <laughs> the little green yeah. with the foil wrapping. Yeah. Do you spearmint? You must trim it, huh? It's not oh, yeah. coming oh. back right, yet. Right, so this, so in the uh, late Spearmint. season, late fall, I just go through and cut all of this down to the ground. And then mm -hmm. by the time, once again, it's a mint, so it's super vigorous. By the time mm -hmm. the season is over, it's like, you know, yeah. basically a wall mm. <laughs> of mint. I can see that with the irrigation and everything. Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. This is our lavender, so we just Yay! Um, kind of trimmed it up and it'll start mm -hmm. flowering here at the end of the month. And you mm -hmm. use the flower, of course. Everyone loves lavender, exactly. including me. Yep. Yep. We went to Palisade 
Last year for the Lavender oh, Festival. We yeah, uh -huh. we were there. Did you see our booth there? And then we also do open farm tours. Possibly. Were y'all at the park? Mm -hmm. That? Okay. Yeah. We, I'm park? sure we saw it there. Yeah, it was crazy busy. Yeah. They were yeah. expecting those kinds mm -hmm. of crowds. And we, uh -huh. man, all day long, I don't think I stopped talking. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was busy. <laughs> but in a good way. It was so mm -hmm. nice. And the Lavender Festival itself, you know, like, I just feel like the whole genre, like, people were just pleasant mm -hmm. <laughs> you're yeah. not like they're there mm -hmm. just to be friendly and kind mm -hmm. and like oh. i saw people do the the flower read and then yes. Yes. um i tried a tea uh-huh is that your tea i can't remember yeah it might yeah, be so we got some samples out mm -hmm. um, i don't know what time of day by about two o'clock i think we had run out of all of our samples mm. but um yeah we had maybe four different blends that people mm -hmm. were tasting and we offered it both, I'm pretty sure we did both hot tea and iced tea, so mm -hmm. you could try it both ways, and it's yeah. great both ways. I remember we tried ice, mm -hmm. iced tea, an iced tea? It's, it was, was pretty hot. And, oh, it and, was warm uh, at that point. lavender lemonade. Oh, yes. yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. I like, so I like how they said. <laughs> so, so, this is our camel meal, and it's not flowering meal. yet, but the actual leaves have uh -huh. a nice chamomile flavor too so there's two mm -hmm. kinds that you are pretty popular german and roman mm -hmm. and we grow the roman which comes back it's tender in colorado so we do lose um some and i have to replant quite a bit every year but mm -hmm. generally it comes back better than German chamomile, which really doesn't overwinter in Colorado. Uh, but isn't that a nice it's, flavor? Kind of a it's very lemony mm -hmm. smell. It's pretty, like, I like it. It yeah. smells good. So this is one that we, I put in um, a mint pear blend. Chamomile pear and mint is one of the, another popular blend that we have. And it's great for, like, when you're getting ready for bed or, like, mm -hmm. after dinner. Because the mint is good for digestion That's and chamomile. I mean, I think it's probably different for different people, but it really works for me to kind of help me mm -hmm. calm down and sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ryan need this yeah, plane then. Yeah. <laughs> got five hours some people say nights. it works great, and I can attest that it works really great for me, and some people maybe not. But okay, so this is tarragon. Tarragon. And this one again, you'll kind of have to crush at this point. It's not super flavorful yet. This one, but they, as it starts to get warmer, they the put flavor. oh, they sell it dry. Yes, a lot. Yes, tarragon, like, mm -hmm. um, fish, like chicken, mm -hmm. meat, meats, and grilling. People use it a lot for that. And so the blend that we have, this one is actually, um, we pair it with spearmint and lemon balm. It's super refreshing. It's really mm. nice. It's the like avalanche. Mm -hmm. Avalanche. Yeah. Tarragon. Yeah. <laughs> And so. then the last ingredient on this field is uh, raspberries. <laughs> Raspberry! Because, um, we'll go through and thin everything in a couple of weeks. And so each one of these bowls will only have like one stock. And we'll mm -hmm. use the leaves that we um, collect during that time as one of our ingredients in that Maroon Bells blend. Mm. And then the berries usually start producing in late July. Mm -hmm. And then we use the berries too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you use um, the leaf that about to have yep. kind of the stem? Yeah, we mm. will peel, peel it off of the stem. So like when I go through and thin it, like I trim uh, all the way to the ground so that uh -huh. the berries themselves will be more vigorous. Uh, but then when we go to like process the ingredient itself, we just pull the leaf off the stem and compost the stem. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. This reminds me of Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of... You can, occasionally, you can walk in the woods and find yes. of this or blackberry. Mm -hmm. yeah. The wild blackberry yeah. is good, too. All of, all of the people I know that live, like, in the northwest part of the U.S., uh -huh. and their experience with blackberries is usually kind of, like, not positive. The huge because, spiky. Yes, yeah. uh, <laughs> because uh -huh. like those wild berries. Yes. Really, um, the wild stuff has mm -hmm. I see, yes. So this is the raspberry yep. too. Yep. And so that's the same. For the so most part, this field and this field match with the exception of like just a couple of things. Mm -hmm. And then that last field, so we planted this one first and mm -hmm. then each year subsequently we added another half acre section. 
-hmm. And that third one was the one where we were starting to figure out like ratios and mm -hmm. that we needed more of certain things and mm -hmm. less of others. So that field is more like a catch-up field. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more um, lavender over there, a lot more chamomile, strawberries, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Because those mm -hmm. are the ingredients we found we needed more of. That's good to yeah. know how to yeah. process <laughs> so that you like figure it out. That's what yes. I was saying to me, not knowing much about it, deciding how much of what to yes. know, it seemed it like a mm -hmm. big hard part. Yes, it was very <laughs> challenging. And so that's why this first year, it was just two rows of everything. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then we started to learn as we did this one. So this section over here, like the entire, this, this way over from the hibiscus over, it will, will be stevia. We put that either with or without every single blend. Mm -hmm. So we use a lot of it. Are the poles just for wire? That's a good question. For branches? <laughs> um, so this one actually it was. So the hibiscus, I was thinking when I first started growing it, I had read that it needed more shade and there's no shade here. So gotcha. this was originally um, a shade up. structure. Oh, I mean uh, these two. Yep, and all the yeah. same thing. Okay. No, nope, those are different. So uh, um, then I realized actually hibiscus grows great without the shade, and it was uh -huh. kind of hard to um, harvest it with that shade structure there. So I was like, we're just gonna pull that down. <laughs> and then these are actually so last year for the first time. You can see there's this chicken wire around the base uh, of our... Mm -hmm. That's what, was I was wondering if it was electric fence for bunnies. Right, well, raccoons, <laughs> actually. Oh, so okay. the raccoons would get in here uh, and just eat the strawberries in one night. Uh -huh. mm. So we put that chicken wire around the base of it to keep them from climbing, like, through the lower parts. And then, yes, this was electrified uh -huh. fence mm. last year. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just waiting because... Like when we have little kids here, especially we do kid tours, yeah, like be. they're just tripping all over it. And <laughs> oh, such a hazard. I see. So I'm going to wait, and if I don't uh -huh. need it, I'm not going to put it up again. <laughs> but. So if you want, you guys can grab more tea and we'll do the second half, which is the barn. <laughs> Yes, so I will just explain. So this is the <laughs> the section with stevia, and this one is non stevia because okay. some people doesn't like stevia. Mm -hmm. So you have ten blend right now. I try. I can't pronounce this and and Creek Creek so blend is kind of a coal product so uh, up, um to the east of our valley is where uh -huh. they did a lot of coal mining historically so uh -huh. one of the creeks that's just a gorgeous creek to hike up now is called anthracite which is a type of coal uh, so they named it after that coal product okay but all of the blends are named after places locally that are uh -huh. you know, beautiful spots i think uh you remember when we lived in the apartments in the springs and you'd uh -huh. see the train loads of coal? Yeah. That mm -hmm. was actually anthracite. Ah, uh, see, stuff. they have all mm -hmm. kind of plain. I just tried this one. I really love it. The anthracite creek brain. Which, uh, Ryan, Ryan tried a maroon bell blend raspberry so pie, pie biscuit. Very plant. good, too. So, we're yeah, gonna... Yeah. Keep that's going. Like it, it's been, there's three uh, wash, sanitize, mm -hmm. and rinse. And when we do the rinse, we do uh, especially all of the leaf ingredients, not so much the berries and the cheese. We do it in these baskets, and then mm -hmm. my husband made this, which is um, like a salad tuner, only like oh, big. And yes. so that gets rid of a lot of the extra moisture. Right, so when I was first doing it, uh -huh. I'd like be taking these trees of like dripping wet leaf products, uh -huh. you know, and it would take like a week or two to get it uh -huh. dry. But this takes off a lot of that moisture um, just right from the get-go, which is uh -huh. good because then it only takes a few days for the product to dry. Uh -huh. Yeah, and now we can go upstairs and you can see the drying log. Just watch your steps. Okay. So we've got four that circulate this way, and then these guys, uh, they kind of draw like the hot uh, air up here. And this then, is the drier yeah, part. Yes, so this is where we do all the drying. These will be, at one point in the summer, they'll be totally full. So uh, I take it out of that orange bucket, 
and then mm -hmm. we bring them upstairs on these trays. Mm -hmm. And this is how, this is what we use to um, do the drying. Dry the, all yeah. the herbs. And this um, was also a learning process. <laughs> Trying to get like, we were thinking, oh, maybe we'll just put it along the outside walls. Mm -hmm. But then we realized really we needed to be able to move them around and we can use the space much more efficiently. Uh -huh. as, like almost like bookshelves, you know. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we, we thought was really good to have it up here is because the heat will rise in the summer. Mm -hmm. So it'll be really hot. Mm -hmm. And we, so we have the... Um, the sides of the barn open to atmosphere, so the temperature in here will get really warm in the afternoon, mm -hmm. which is perfect. And the weather in Colorado is hell because it's not humid. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And that, so for Colorado, it's like one uh -huh. of the perfect things to do because, mm -hmm. like, um, in Portland, like you said, they deal a lot with, um, like, um, in Thailand, it's gonna be more. Right. <laughs> yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. I like they still did the the, the wooden mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> Look at that. Yep. So but, we have a friend who's a timber framer. And he, uh, he, he so put this all one is no stevia and anthracite creek His business is in Salida, Colorado. Mm -hmm. So he has a timber Mind company, and he goes and fells the wood, and then he cuts it and basically builds it on site, and then takes it all down. And puts it on his truck, like in the right order, so that it mm -hmm. all could go up like within a day. Wow, yeah, it was this super is cool. beautiful <laughs> barn work here. I know this, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that is one thing. Um, the province that we bought the land in Thailand is more of a, the drier side. Mm of is land okay. Okay. yeah they they build uh they grow pineapple mm -hmm. and coconut and I mean, um <laughs> what, aloe vera that's what i was gonna add on dry for thailand uh -huh. which is still very very wet yes <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so then we use these to store the the full ingredient before we uh grind it down Mm -hmm. You know, so like we'll take what well, basically looks like a dry stalk or something mm -hmm. like a plant. And then once mm -hmm. the barrel is full, then we mm -hmm. grind it into the powder that you'll get, you know, if you open up the tea bag, it'll be the powder. And see. And this is what we use um, for grinding. So we actually, um, uh, we do the grinding on the deck here and mm -hmm. close the door because it's, this is the dusty. It, so it gets dusty <laughs> now mm -hmm. at this step. But, um. The product goes is fed into this chute right here, and then mm -hmm. comes into this, and this just pulver. It spins and pulverizes everything, mm -hmm. and then once it gets to the right um, sieve size, and it comes out here and into. We put a bag filter mm -hmm. and a flange, mm -hmm. so it um, is captured in that bag filter. Otherwise, it was just like dust. Everywhere <laughs> <laughs> we lose half the product to the mm. air. So that was a change or a modification that we had to make to this. But um, yeah, other other than that, this is a great um, great tool. Good. Yes. And then the last thing is blending and bagging. So we do um, we kind of just do it as uh, demand, you mm -hmm. know, so that we've got all the individual ingredients stored upstairs. And then once we need more of a certain blend, then we just um, mix it. And then this is our bagger. Mm -hmm. So this hopper actually uh, sits right here mm -hmm. and you feed the um, product, the mixed product into the hopper. Mm -hmm. And then these are like little um, like measuring cups basically. Mm -hmm. And they spit the right amount out this little chute mm -hmm. into the filter paper, which is wrapped. And these are little heaters. Mm -hmm. So they heat seal and then cut the paper, mm -hmm. the filter paper. And at the same time, they're adding the string and the back mm -hmm. tag, which is this and cutting that. Mm -hmm. And then the last part, it's not there, but the outer pouch, you know, that's got the cute mm -hmm. little sayings and stuff on it. And then the name of the one um, comes right here and it's sealed and cut here. And then it's uh, spit out on that little conveyor <laughs> belt. So that's how that works. And in theory, it's like perfect, but it does require quite a bit of babysitting yeah. to make sure sometimes the temperature is off, sometimes mm -hmm. like the eye mark isn't cut right. But, you know, in general, 
Mm -hmm. It's a pretty neat goes. little thing. It'll get... put, it puts the little tear mm -hmm. thing on there and then um, you can open it up and the tea bag just like yep. you already tried is... Oops. <laughs> yeah. And so our tea has on the bag tag, it's got the ingredients that we grow plus mm -hmm. other stuff like air and dirt and mm -hmm. bees and <laughs> sunshine and stuff like that. <laughs> Corrado sunshine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, and then you just um, put it in the beaker box Store upstairs and yep, storage. Yeah, so once it's packaged, then it goes into those boxes, and then when they get empty, then we just do the packaging again, blending the packaging again. Yeah, and otherwise, the individual ingredients, once they come out of here, mm -hmm. we put them in five gallon mylar bags so that they're both UV. Um, safe they're not exposed to uv light which is mm -hmm. one of the things that degrades flavor mm -hmm. and then also air will be the other thing so they're sealed up in there. so read the back of tea how long it can storage well so fda which is the food and drug it says it doesn't have a shelf life so mm -hmm. whatever but i think um we probably don't keep ingredients more than like a year so once it's a year now we'll go ahead and replace any ingredients through the um, through the harvest season that mm -hmm. didn't get used last year. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. I think we got a lot of knowledge yeah. with like how to do the tea here at Elevation Tea. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>